Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This video tutorial is for students who are in Algebra 2, Chapter 5, as we walk through the topics of the goal. Now we're starting to get into some of the big theorems. So far, uh, when we're looking at this, um, three out of these topics are really easy, and then one of them require, one of them, which I've saved for last, requires a little bit of work, but isn't as bad as some of the other things that we'll be getting to. And trust me, will be getting there. But first things first, using the remainder theorem is going to be safe for last, so we start in fact with the factor theorem. And I even was smart this time and gave myself a little bit of notes. Ultimately what you're doing is you are taking this number, your x plus 2, and you are funneling it through the equation. And then you're finding out whether or not your answer is 0. The only thing that we need to keep in mind is whatever sign this is, is going to be flipped when we plug it into the actual equation. So when we're looking at this one and we're setting up our negative something to the fourth minus something to the third plus four times something plus nine. Here's the thing. This is a positive 2 that we see here. We're going to flip it and put in a negative 2 every single time. This one, you see how that's a positive 3? What happens is when we're plugging it in, we're going to be using negative 3. Over here, that's negative 3. When we plug it in, we're going to be using positive 3. So just be careful to flip your sign of the thing that they give you. So 2 to the 4th power, 2, 4, 8, 16. So that's going to be 16. And then 2 to the third, that's going to be negative 8 plus, or minus, excuse me, because 4 times negative 2 is minus 8 plus 9, okay? So that's negative 16 plus 8 minus 8 plus 9. So far, so good. What are we looking for here? The 8s cancel out. What is 9 minus 16? Negative 7. So we're going to have, what this means is, for your answer box here, let me write that somewhere else equals negative 7. For your answer box, you're going to have p of something equals something. So you're going to put a number here and a number here, and then is it a factor, not that I can spell, factor question mark. So flip the sign, goes in there. We funneled in the negative 2, what do we get? Negative 7. Now, is your answer 0? No, then it is not a factor. The only way it works, the only way we know that it is a factor of something is if it comes out with no remainder. Because this right here is your remainder. If we did our polynomial long division and did this out, our remainder would be negative 7. So when it says, is it a factor, much like in math, if you're doing 56, you know that 7 is a factor, you know that 8 is a factor, is 9 a factor? No, because you have some ugly decimal as a response. It's the same kind of idea that we are using here. So, next one. We're going to funnel this through. So it's negative something to the fourth minus 2 times something to the third plus 6 times something squared minus 27. Take note that I'm filling in my equation first before I actually put in the number. I do that deliberately usually because I don't want to accidentally forget something. This gets, as you can see, a little long and a little disorganized if you're not careful. So this is a plus 3 over here. So my final answer is going to be p of negative 3 equals something. And then we're going to be asking, is it a factor? Yes or no. So what do we have? We're plugging in negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. Negative 3 to the fourth power. Ms. Dubois gets to show off. And I'm going to tell you that it's a 1. Uh, let's see here. Negative 2 times 3 cubed is negative 27. Uh, I don't need the exponent, Ms. Dubois. Well, watch what you're doing. Plus 6 times negative 3 squared is 9 minus 27. All right? So that's negative 81 plus 27 doubled is 54 plus uh, 6 times... Yeah, my brain just turned off. What is 6 times 9? 54 minus 27. Okay. 54 and 54 is 108. What is 27 and 80? It's 108, which cancels out to get us 0. So, is our answer 0? Yes, it's a factor. 4 plus 4 something to the third plus 5 
something squared plus nine flag. What's our number? Going to be three, three, because we're flipping our sign. Okay. So we know it's going to be p of three equals something. And is it a factor? Question mark. Yes or no. Three to the fourth is eighty-one. So that's negative two times eighty-one plus four times three cubed is twenty-seven plus five times three squared is nine plus nine. So two times eighty-one, that's negative one sixty-two plus four times twenty-seven is one hundred eight. And then five times nine is forty-five plus nine. Okay, um, let's see here. 108 and 145. 108 and 45 is 140. 153. What is 153 plus 9? Is 162. So negative 162 plus 162 is our answer. Zero. Yes, it's a factor. Okay, so factor theorem, pretty straightforward. Next up, finding possible zeros. Okay, what we're doing here, let me scroll over to problem type 1 first and just barely got it all. All right, here's what you're gonna be looking for. You are looking for your last and your first. So what's our last number? Seven, you're looking for the number without a variable. My first degree is going to be there, right there, so my number is gonna be three. So this is my first degree. I can tell because that's my highest exponent. This is my last degree, I can tell because there's no variable there. Problem type 2, you can already kind of see it over here. They start mixing them up and you have to go hunting for them, but we'll put that on pause. Problem type 1 is nice too. They literally show you there's your first, there's your last. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to have our 7 on top and then we're going to have our 3 on bottom. Next step, we want to list the factors of those numbers. So what are our factors of 7? We have 1 and 7. We have 1 and 3. And now, in order to find, because this is all possible, there's your keyword right there, possible combinations. We're not finding the exact ones. No, that's later. These are all the possible. So what are all possible combinations of these four numbers? We have 1 over 1. We have 1 over 3. We have 7 over 1 and 7 over 3. There's our list. And take note this button now, after all this time, exists in the calculator. They never gave it to you in Chapter 4 because they were mean, but now, at last, it's back. Okay, next up, we want our first and our last degree. It's always going to be last over first. I don't remember that unless I write that down. So what's our last degree? It's 7. What's our first degree? It's 3. Oh, isn't that hilarious? We finally get a screen grab where they're completely different numbers and we're still using the same things. Oh my god, and it's the same things down here. How does my computer do this to me? Yeah, anyway, okay, what are our options? Let's make this up. I was going to change this for a second. Let's make a really awkward number. Let's make that 8. Okay, that way now, haha, -ha, it's different. What are our factors of 8? Uh, we have 1, and we have 8, and we have 2, and we have 4. Three, we only have two options, we have one and three. So we need all possible combinations. So we're gonna start with one. So we have one over one and one over three, okay? Next, we need two. So two over one and two over three. Okay, next we want four over one and four over three. Okay, next we have eight over one and eight over three. And now we just slap on our commas and plus minuses over everything, and that's all you're doing for this topic. Comma plus minus, comma plus minus, comma plus minus, comma plus minus. That's what you're doing. All right, one more. We're going to go really crazy here. We're going to make up our numbers now. Um, let's see here. Flush tool, do what you're supposed to do. I'm going to cross this out. We're going to make this um, a 5, and we're going to make this... Uh, a four. Okay, so we have last over first, which means it's going to be four over five. And what are our combinations? We have one, two, and four, and then we have one and five. And we want to list all possible combinations, so start there. One over one, one over five. Okay, 
Next, 2 over 1, 2 over 5, 10. Next, 4 over 1, 4 over 5, and there's our complete list. And now we just get out all of our plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. That's all you're doing for finding all possible combinations. The same thing is going to happen with problem type, problem type 2, but like we said, we now have to go hunting for the first and last degree. Okay, new verse, same as the first. That's the phrase, right? So what is, we have to remember, our last is the number with no x. And then our first is the number with the highest, highest exponent. That's what we're looking for. So there's our last, because that's our number without the variable. And then what's our highest exponent? There it is. There's going to be my first. Okay, so it's always going to be last over first. And what do we have? We have 8 and we have 2. And we want all of our combinations, right? So we need all of our factors. We have 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. 2 only breaks down to 1 and 2. Now we need all possible combinations. There are two reasons why this is considered problem type 2. The first thing it does is that it mixes up the order. The second thing it does is that it will sometimes give you double fractions. And we kind of have to be careful of those, and I want to show you what I mean. So we have 1 over 1, okay, and then 1 over 2. Then next up we have 2 over 1 and 2 over 2. 2 over 2 simplifies to 1 over 1, so we don't need to worry about that, but it has been accounted for. Next up we have 4 over 1 and 4 over 2. 4 over 2 simplifies to 2, so we don't need to worry about that one. Next one, we have 8 over 1 and 8 over 2. 8 over 2 simplifies to 4. We already have that one. So now we have our complete list. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. There we go. That's the list. And that's the two things that they're training you for for problem type 2. First is to go hunting for your degrees, and next is to be aware of the fact that some of these will double count. So, next one. What's our last? There it is right on the end, because it doesn't have a variable. Where's our highest exponent? Right there, and that's going to be our first. So it's going to be last over first, and then we have 9 and 9. So we have 1, 3, 9, 1, 3, 9. What are all, poss all possible combinations? We'll start with the 1. We have 1 over 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 9. Next is the 3. 3 over 1, that's good. 3 over 3 simplifies to 1, which we already have. Next up, 3 over 9, what is that? That simplifies to 1 third, already have that. Next, 9, 9 over 1, 9 over 3, 9 over 9. 9 over 1 si doesn't simplify. 9 over 3 is 3. We have that. 9 over 9 is 1. We have that. So we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 1 ninth, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 9. And there is our list. And we're starting to realize that what you're doing is pretty straightforward. There actually isn't a whole lot of challenge in this topic. There's a bit of hunting, but no outright challenge. Last one before we move on. Let's see here. There's my last. Where's my highest exponent? Uh, over there. There's my first. Okay, so it's going to be last over first. So what do we have? We have 4 over 4. So 1, 2, 4, and 1, 2, 4. All right, what do we have? We have... 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 2, which is 1, 2 over 4, which is a half. Okay, that one's taken care of. 4 over 1, 4 over 2, which is 2, we have that. 4 over 4, which is 1, and we have that. So we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 1 fourth, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. There's our list. Okay, not so bad. Now for one that we need to use an earlier topic. So, huh, funny that. Remember synthetic division? How convenient. So, the most important thing here um, is to track your exponents, because here's the thing. You need all 
that's an A. All exponents accounted for, accounted for. So if I start to set up my synthetic division, what do we have? We have a 4, a 3, do we have a 2? No, we don't. But we have a 1 and we have a nothing. So we have negative 1, we have 4, we don't have anything for the 2, we have negative 3, and we have 9. What that means then, since this is synthetic, since this is synthetic division and we have to account for it, what's the universal placeholder? Zero. And then what's the number they give us? One. All right. So we are going to have, let's see here, uh, we're going to be given, okay, the answer box doesn't show you when I did my screen grabs. You're going to get your quotient, quotient, you're going to have your remainder, remainder, and you're going to be told your P of 1. They're tricking you because these are the same thing. You're just copying and pasting your number. So let's actually find out what these are going to be. So from synthetic division, and I know you know this because I did a topic just on this, negative 1 drops down. 1, time, one times negative 1 is negative 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. Push down. Good. Next. 1 times 3 is 3. Push down. 0 and 3 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Push down. We get a 0. 1 times 0 is 0. Push down. 9 is our remainder. So, remember, this one gets a little bit boxed off because that's our remainder, which means it's also our P of 1. Then, that's our number, that's our x, that's our x squared, that's our x cubed. Remember that when Mr. Boy had to put in all of her exponents backwards? So, our quotient is negative 1x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x, and then we don't have to write a number. That's a little bit tricky because there's a lot of work we just did, and a lot of it is very heavily based on the synthetic division topic. So we'll go through a couple more examples to make sure you're comfortable with it first before I let you off in the wilds. So we're going to have a quotient. Quotient. We're going to have a remainder. Remainder. We're going to have a P of, in this case, it's going to be 2. And remember, these are the same. So what do we have? We have two goes here, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so there's no uh, extra things. Two, negative three, negative three, and then nine. Now notice I don't have a zero here because every single exponent is accounted for. So there's no extra steps that we need to worry about here like we did up here. So push down, there's the two. Two times two is four. Push down, we're left with one. 2 times 1 is 2, push down, negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, push down, 7. So 7 is our remainder and our P, okay, because that gets boxed off. That's our number, that's our X, that's our X squared. So our answer is going to be 2X squared plus 1X minus 1. And you're done. So, so long as you're comfortable with your synthetic division, what you're doing is actually kind of straightforward. It's just you need to remember your synthetic division on demand, especially where the topic itself gave you the setup. Now you have to do the setup on your own. So 3, 2, 1, 0. Every single exponent is accounted for. So we have 2, 2, negative 3, negative 8. And we're going to have a quotient. Remainder and the P of negative 2 equals, equals, equals. All right, so start with pushing down 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Push down. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Push down. Negative 3 and 4 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Push down. Negative 10. Box that off because that's our remainder. Negative 10, negative 10. There's our number, there's our x, and there's our x squared. So our quotient is 2x squared minus 2x plus 1. And that's how this one works. So a lot of review, a lot of use of older topics. That happens a couple of times in goal 5. Next video, if I decide to make it before I chicken out, is going to be this unholy mess right here. I do strongly recommend to students that this is not a favorite topic of Ms. Dubois, 
but we shall see when we get there. As always, stay happy, stay healthy. Where's my mask? As always, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. See you in the next one.